everybody out there. Um, my name is Joanna and I'm very happy that we can have our next uh, EMEA Open Masterclass this evening with two great experts, with um, Heiko Seif and Julian von der Nein. They are uh, partners at um, AlphaBuild and they are very experienced in the mobility sector um, and will introduce us today uh, into the future of mobility, how we will live in the future in cities, uh, for, of course, for the next generation, what will the life look like um, and what will happen and change during the time. So let's start, let's get into it. Um, I'm looking forward to the session and we'll hand over to Heiko. Hi there. Thanks for the introduction, you and Joanna. Yes, my name is Heiko, Heiko Seif. I'm with AlphaBuild and um, yes, founded AlphaBuild together with my colleague, Julian, who's in the call as well. We do the presentation today together. And from our background, so I worked a couple of years in the automotive industry. Um, first of all at Daimler, then a couple of years later for the BMW group. Before I then switched to a technology consulting company, which I founded on my own with, a, with some colleagues from the BMW group. Um, always in the area of mobility, mobility solutions. And we had a couple of projects in this sector, uh, not only for OEMs, uh, but also for mobility providers. Um, Julian remembers 60 Car Club, I think. <laughs> uh, the very beginning of, in my opinion, mobility solutions and mobility on demand solutions in Germany. Whereas we have seen kinds of mobility solutions. There's mobility on demand solutions in the US a bit earlier. And then switched to, to a project at BMW Drive now, which now was all incorporated to uh, Free Now, and Free Now is a mobility provider here in Germany. Um, so a couple of projects in this field, uh, not only on the OEM side and mobility provider side, but also on technology side, because there is a lot of technology needed to make this come to truth, to reality. So in addition, I have a professorship for technology management at Munich Business School. And this is a good combination for a company building because there you have first-hand and second-hand information based on research data. And we can do research on our own. And when we find something interesting, we even invest then in some solutions. So this was my introduction. I hand over to, to Julian. Yes, uh, thank you, Haikyo. Thank you, Anna. Um, uh, great to be here. Um, uh, hello to everybody. So let's talk about connected, seamless, intermodal mobility solution. And let me start to introduce myself to Sentinels. So um, I worked uh, with Haikyo since a couple of years. We met us in the um, startup center from the ESA, ESA Business Incubation Center. So where I uh, founded a company for a couple of years and um, so in this field of mobility or air mobility, so that's the claim of today, um, and uh, with deep techs all around and uh, for different kinds of problems and areas uh, in the industry. So um, we worked on these um, startups also for corporates and um, um, in this, in this uh, environment, everything is about uh, deep tech and technology and uh, technology change. So and we have some uh, we that did some investments in the in the past. So um, um, also in the mobility sector, <clears throat> and it was so so interesting that we that we saw that uh, a lot of questions come up and what is the future? What is the future going on? And um, what's the next big thing in that in this field? So that we um, also founded um, AlphaBuild. AlphaBuild is a company built in Munich, and um, with an, with an enhanced um, um, yeah, uh, uh, um, um, institute on the Munich Business School, um, which is Heiko working on, and um, so there is a good combination, as uh, Heiko mentioned. And um, yeah, let's talk about 
the future of mobility, yeah? Um, yes. May I quickly Joanna. Yeah, may I quickly interrupt you to send out a short information to the audience. Whenever you have got any questions, feel free to post them into the chat. Uh, we can answer them during the presentation or um, the latest afterwards. So feel free to ask any questions at any time. Great. Yes, we're keen to answer them. So these are living partnerships. And one of our biggest partnership is, of course, with INEA. You see it right here in the middle, down here. Um, we, had a, we have a lot of... Um, connections and strong collaborations with leading institutes across the globe um, as well in the US like Stanford or MIT but also um, in the Asian region uh, where we have close collaborations for instance with Tonchi University, um, Tokyo Institute of Technology but also as uh, Julian already mentioned we have a very close collaboration with the European Space Agency. And here we still have good projects which all deal in the field of mobility and mobility solutions. Um, another part is um, the connection to um, the industry, because without the industry providing us with technology, like for instance, big players like Siemens, General Electric, and others in this field, Samsung, um, uh, nothing works. Uh, and the startups that came uh, along the way and still um, are coming up in the, in the next couple of years, I think, in this field, because it's quite a promising field, mobility solutions. Um, today, it's about seamless mobility. And Julian already mentioned um, who we are. So um, we explore the things. We are always curious on new things. So this is a bit of my DNA and Julian's DNA. Uh, he really is a big networking entrepreneur, um, perhaps already on his way to being a, a serial entrepreneur, right, Julian? <laughs> yeah. Let's see, yeah. Let's see. Let's I do see. my best. <laughs> you do your best. Okay. As Julian already mentioned, we have um, – good resources in terms of um, our institute. Um, we have um, lots of databases that we can use in order to find out what are the trends, what are the technology, but also the market trends. And we work in strong collaboration, especially with uh, the big five in terms of um, consulting companies like uh, McKinsey, for instance, like Bain or BCG because they are quite closely connected as well to research institutes and they even have their own research institutes um, and in collaboration with them we always find application oriented research especially from um, consulting companies and this helps us uh, on the one hand to see what's going on in in the industry on the one hand, but also we can reflect this to academics and scientific. So everything that is in research and coming up in the next years, like 5G was a couple of years ago, still in research. The same is with 6G on its way uh, of being, um, let's say, mature enough to come up um, in the recent, uh, in the couple of coming up years. And um, yeah, that's a, a bit the big background where we get our information from. So let's start with the um, seamless mobility. Seamless mobility um, tries to solve a couple of problems that we face, especially in the city environment. City areas um, are congested and the traffic there is getting worse. Um, and as I said, it's especially the case in urban areas. And then um, I already talked about different players in the fields like the OEMs that um, produce cars, which is just one of a couple of uh, mobility solutions. Um, OEMs that produces or that produce trains or other mobility solutions from scooters over, let's say, autonomous driving vehicles. Um, to bigger scales like uh, shuttles and shuttle buses, up to buses, electrified buses, until uh, trains. 
and everything um, helps to solve the transportation problem within cities. Um, and the seamless mobility is when we talk about intermodal um, uh, mobility, that means using different solutions and combining them seamlessly, which is still now or until now still a vision. And to, to, in order to address it, we try to see this in three different scenarios. And uh, the first scenario is when we talk about um, the future of mobility in cities, that we just um, do business as usual um, and continue um, trying to solve the transportation problem within cities with the existing solutions. That means private cars are in the city looking for parking space spaces. We have... Um, public transportation systems like trains and buses. Um, and what we see is that urbanization, um, yes, steps more and more forward and we get um, the urban areas enlarged each year um, that the traffic within the cities is getting worse and um, congestions will still uh, be part of, uh, of the daily uh, life then. Um, we have then lots of blocks in, in delivery. That means if you see the delivery services increasing in cities, blocking roads, especially one-way roads where there is no space, then you have to wait until package or um, yeah, package delivery takes place. And all these kind of things happen already nowadays and will be not easier uh, in the future. And the same is with parking spaces, um, there will be, um, let's say, there were, there will be preferred roads where you have to pay extra for toll roads where you then can perhaps drive uh, freely. Um, and these kind of things try to solve it um, on a step-by-step -step and daily business scenario. This can't be so the, the solution out, out of our opinion, even when you think that there is a technology in place that I already, yes, touched a bit, uh, the autonomous vehicles. Now imagine these autonomous vehicles combine uh, or use the same space like um, traditional vehicles, like cars as we know it from today, uh, or cars that you drive on your own, but being electrified. And there you will see, um, uh, on the one hand, a certain competition on the road between these two vehicle types and um, the traffic within the city is not getting less, but a bit more. And again, we see, um, yes, um, autonomous vehicles using the same spaces like traditional vehicles. Um, and there we go towards the same direction of congestions and um, yeah, increasing traffic within cities by such kind of vehicles. What we see nowadays is a bit, uh, especially when it's good weather, as today in Munich, um, a trend towards bikes and e-bikes and scooters, street scooters, electrified scooters that really reduce a bit the traffic within the city. Um, nevertheless, we have a situation that can be optimized, especially when we talk about on-demand concepts for mobility in the city. And then there is a third um, scenario that could be somehow a solution where we have these kind of solutions as a basis, as an installed base. Uh, imagine you have the scooters as a transportation means, you have e-bikes as a transportation means, you have uh, electrified vehicles that are autonomously driving as a uh, transportation means. And in addition, transportation means that we don't see yet and that are just starting away like shuttles, small shuttles that have the co capacity of 15 to 20 people per shuttle. And then you can there um, use these kind of shuttles. So. Um, combining this over a platform within a seamless uh, solution 
uh, that could be really the future. And that could really help to, to reduce traffic and the traffic um, load and the capacity utilization of um, infrastructure. But what has to be in place in order to, to come up with such solutions or enable such solutions? We need lots of technology and what kind of technology <coughs> we need? We will come uh, to this point later on. Let's have firstly a, a short look on some definitions. You see, we have some definitions here. What does it mean, seamless mobility? Seamless mobility means you can switch from one concept to another um, without any interruptions, big interruptions. That means you don't have any waiting times. The solutions are already in place. You can book the solutions. You can book seats, for instance, in, in shuttles that are autonomously driving. And the, the shuttles take um, flexible routes, not fixed routes like buses today, but flexible routes. And there even can use these routes that are faster. Um, we have a couple of tools that we need here, um, and they are gathered um, in, in platforms. We have a couple of, such as supply chain um, um, optimization, um, the provision of capacity for transportation, um, a wide range of business model that can be incorporated here. Uh, but still we have some boundaries and the boundaries are that we have private shared and public transportations and um, here you already see a harmonization or an orchestration between these players so the framework must be uh, determined by um, the governmental uh, institutions so cities themselves for instance can set up the rules that for instance, they have to open up platforms and APIs in order to uh, um, make the interfaces interoperable between the, the different means. So this is uh, important here. And still, when we look on the, um, the, the good side of seamless mobility, we see that we can, according to studies and simulations, um, increase the, the capacity of transportation by 30%. That means 30% persona kilometers can be added. Um, in the same time, you can reduce the, the travel time per post persona by 10%. These show simulations when these kind of um, solutions are in place. And when you look down here, the five indicators that really show up if this is a performant solution or not, it's about availability. So is the solution available? Is it affordable? So it can't cost too much. Is it efficient? So fast and um, brings you from A to B in a short time. It should be convenient <coughs> and at the same time sustainable. That means not harming environment. In best case, even improving yeah. environment. And, and all these factors are absolutely necessary for a seamless mobility uh, and also for the, for, the, for the future of our cities. So um, it, it, it's a quite complex field. So urban, urban mobility is a complex field because there are so much layers which have to be combined and integrated. And the problem is that there are lots of factors which are um, really hard to integrate. So, and uh, on the other side, it's about data, it's about infrastructure data, so which are necessary to combine this in this comfortable way, in an efficient way to combine a journey from A to B. So, and this is in, really a complex scenario with uh, different stakeholders, with, with um, different approaches, different business models. And the, the, the big problem uh, we see this today in our cities is that um, the next channel, the next mobility channel is coming up, but there is more or less no integration with the other channels. So if there come the scooters, there are the scooters. So if there come the Uber, it's the Uber. Is there my taxi, my taxi? And then uh, there come the public services uh, with, with, with uh, the, the undergrounds, the S-Bahn and so on. So, but the integration of these systems is... The approach for this for this for the future which 
is necessary to combine with new mobility uh, um, um, channels like these robot taxis or autonomous taxis or uh, I don't know uh, perhaps the, the the one or other um, e fortal so but in the end of the day so it's necessary to combine this and um, I mean Heike will 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 show this in the, on the next slides but um, it's also something where where the private and the public industry has to combine their stakes okay. and um, uh, create a new solution yes yeah, so the, the interoperability between the different solutions is crucial here and on the other side, when we face the, the, the topic of increasing transportation needs within cities by 40% within the next eight years, um, as you see it in New York, Paris, and Tokyo already, there you see on the one hand the problem, but also you see that uh, there is a, a huge space for new boss business models and even um, new uh, businesses that don't exist right now. It's the, the example that Julian showed us was the shuttle, shuttle services, autonomous driving shuttle services that are not in place yet. Um, these are a couple of things and these challenges are faced by car makers, by the public transportation, as Julian said, and of course, by those that provide um, platforms uh, where you can really integrate these kind of things and uh, try to find um, new approaches for a business model. And there are two that I want to highlight here, two investment companies. The one is Rethink Mobility from Finland. Um, no, it's not from Finland. Global Mass is from um, uh, Finland and Rethink Mobility. Um, these are just two examples uh, as VCs that are focusing on this topic of seamless mobility solutions. So uh, on the next side, slide we see a couple of players in this field where new business is arising uh, we see lots of startups on the one hand like silver rail or uh, motion work or um, here in the middle you see whim whim it is, is going towards such a solution such a platform solution for integrated seamless mobility down here you see moya this is a big player uh, an oem going in this direction for um, demand responses, uh, transportation solutions. And we see uh, as well Siemens Mobility, which is a, um, a tech provider uh, offering platforms for integrating different um, solutions. And last not least, um, public transportation, for instance, of Stuttgart with FS SSB Flex, trying to integrate other solutions compared to um, S-Bahn um, and, and um, the tube, that means um, underground, um, combining those with other solutions. Um, and these are all addressing these new um, fields. Julian, what about Siemens? Do you think they are well prepared for that? Yeah, I mean, Siemens is, is, is doing uh, an interesting job in this. It's coming from the infrastructure sector so there, um, everything with this IoT in the infrastructure is their home turf, and the guys are able to combine this information with their platform approach for a mass platform. So where uh, for the for the for the local government, it's possible to operate such a platform and to have open RPs where other uh, supplier of mobility can adapt, and so you can really um, build up this 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 intermodal uh, mobility solution for the citizens so i mean this is this is on the one hand really interesting on the other side so uh, we are living in germany so uh, we have different uh, um, infrastructural bases we have um, uh, on on the whole world difference between these cities and and their individual situations so and i mean uh, um, intermodal mobility is not the same everywhere there is not only the one size fits all to every city. So it's really um, on this, on this, it's a city approach, it's an individual approach. So, and um, the local environment has to decide what is the best way for the city. So, and has to decide how can we handle this? How can we organize that? So on this specific environment, which is, which is in the, in these different cities. So, yeah. but um, I have an interesting story because so we, we saw um, a Chinese startup in 2018 
So the guys coming from the mobile industry, mobile infrastructure, and they began to uh, collect mobile data, so mobile performance information from these from these mobile phones. And um, today, the guys selling this information to a, to a local government because the guys want to um, um, organize robot taxis, and robot taxis uh, are not that autonomous. That you the, 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 we, we, do you think? So um, you have to steer this from um, a, a local center, and you have to. Um, yeah, you have to, to, to secure that there's enough bandwidth in the region where these cars are uh, travel. So, and uh, for this, the guys selling information about the performance in, in infrastructure in, in the mobile performance infrastructure so that you can steer these this, 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 uh, robo taxis in a secure way so that you can uh, give to the citizens uh, a secure mobile solution. So, and on this example, you can see that the infrastructure information about that, and uh, which which is so important to to organize such a seamless um, uh, intermodal mobility uh, solution. Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you for for, for this. Um, My opinion, have... very good too. Yes. Hi, Joanna. We have two questions from the audience. Yes, we have two okay. questions from the audience. Good. One question is from Mark. Thank you very much. Um, do you also share the belief that autonomous, including DRT, will have best and first use case in combined mobility? Yes, I think this is a, a very good question. I think for the last mile, DRT solutions are very important. That means you have to use a de demand responsive uh, transportation for, for the last mile. Um, the same you can use, in my opinion, for um, fleet services or shuttle services, um, as you know it, for instance, from big corporations where you have a shuttle service from one plant to another, there you can use a DRT as well. Um, and you can really adjust it according to uh, capacities. You can book seats, you can book the time um, for a shuttle, for instance, and then um, make an appointment, um, I would say minutes, um, um, with a precision of minutes and it should really be in the precision of minutes or seconds even that you have the, the, the mobility solution um, available ac according to your needs. And in my opinion, it's about combining these DRT solutions with existing solutions such as trains. When you arrive in a city, for instance, uh, for the last mile, um, for shuttle services, um, th this is my opinion. And even um, if you if you have a different um, situation, like you have good weather um, compared to bad weather when when it's raining, uh, there you have also um, at the end um, the selection or the choice of using a DRT solution with bad weather or um, let's say a scooter solution or an e-bike solution when it when you have good weather for the last mile. So in my opinion, it's depending on the, the exact demand context base. So in my opinion, yes, DRT will be the best solution only when you combine it with other solutions. But that gives me the feeling that when you say, okay, um... The, there has to be a great av availability for these kind of um, uh, mobility solutions like cars. There has to be as well a big amount or a huge amount of, uh, of cars in the city then. No, uh, I would say no, because at the moment you see um, buses, you see um, the, the, the density of transportation when you, let's say, have a good capacity load, a utilization of a shuttle, let's say, with 80% or so, compared to a car where only one person sits in the car, they already see having, let's say, 10 or 12 people in a shuttle transporting the people from A to B, um, compared to solutions where you have only one person in one car, Yes. Um, the density is much um, better and has a better utilization of, of transportation infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. There is a second question, right? Yes. Um, from Mario. Are we only talking about people mobility 
or also goods mobility? Why is there no public logistics service similar to metro for people transport? Yeah. Yes, these solutions are coming up um, indeed. Um, um, public transportation, even there you have uh, already robot, robot solutions that are able to, to drive along the pavements, uh, not on the road, but on the, on the pavements to deliver um, packages, um, to deliver um, small goods and so on. Um, the solutions are in a testing phase. I know it from uh, from Boston, for instance, where you have solutions like that. Um, there are other concepts like um, concepts from Google uh, for for the um, Riverside um, um, city of Toronto, uh, where you, you use other solutions, underground solutions, to do um, such delivery solutions, good delivery solutions. Um, in my opinion, the, there, there can be a change in the future and there must be a change because delivery services really block roads at the moment in, in cities. I don't know how it is in Berlin, but in Munich, sometimes you really are annoyed about those delivery services blocking roads. So there must be in the future different solutions com compared to what we have. And here, I think autonomous uh, or semi-autonomous driven um, smaller solutions uh, will come up uh, first first things are starting away uh, right away at the moment yeah and do you think uh, the other solutions will happen then on the let's say on the river in the air or much more uh, under under the ground so when we have the the the, the, the horizon of 2030 i would say it's hard to to deliver um, the goods Probably for small goods, it would work. And for small goods that have to be delivered fast, you will have perhaps um, air mobility solutions. Um, the air, urban air mobility solutions um, with uh, VTOLs uh, will take some time. I don't know if we see this already in place 2013. Um, could be, but in my opinion, these are premium mobility solutions and quite expensive compared to the other solutions and the question is at the end um is the time saving here um in in in, in correlation to the correlation to the value that you get so probably these are more premium services um i think there will come some solutions yes um as as well for for goods but these are still premium or niche segments not the big ones Okay. Uh, safety reasons as well, of course. Uh, if a dro drone drops down, what we see sometimes, even I don't know if you remember uh, the camera that dropped down on the skier, Marcel Hirscher, just um, <laughs> yes, recording him. And still, there are some critical things to, to consider. Mm, of course. Yes, but there will be solutions. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Then I would say there is a short um, overview from Siemens uh, platform um, as, as a solution uh, where you have door-to-door -door solutions using different kinds of mobility solutions and integrating other services like the, plannings, the planning phase, the using phase, the ticketing and payment phase, and even then the mobility management phase again when you already plan for instance your next trip of the next day and you get already hints of what kind of solutions and in the morning uh, you get uh, the hint what kind of solutions would be the the fastest the most convenient perhaps even the most healthy ones i don't know what kind of um things you want to 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 set as a parameter but uh, so such platforms, and this is what you, Julian said, will come up. But the, the, the crucial part of it is that they are, uh, the, the interfaces are interoperable. Then it works out. There we see some, some limits at the moment because at the moment, each solution is looking for their own preferences, uh, own um, advantages and there is no not an integrated perspective except one solution that is um, using interoperable operable, um, um, platforms and this is a whim in, in Finland for instance. 
So this is just one, one example. Here you see again some potentials that um, seamless mobility has. Um, of course, these are these things are based on a simulation like convenience uh, increases from a baseline from nowadays using pu public transportation being bound to certain routes where the in in convenience is increasing to availability where you have um, passenger call kilometers per year, but you can really uh, increase. The, the utilization and the, the passenger kilometers in the city, the efficiency, that means the, 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 the time that you spend per trip in average, affordability, so you can really find solutions that are cheaper compared to those that, you, that we know, especially when we think of a good capacity utilization in, in such solutions. And of course, when we think of electrification of such solutions that we really uh, reduce it as much as we can to uh, five, eighty-five percent less to a baseline of of today. So these are effects, the the, the five um, parameters that we have to look at. Then um, what we see as a baseline nowadays, the train will stay the same. That means train solutions will be at the forty percent of um, let's say market share. Um, the private car, car will uh, decrease. Um, on the other side, uh, when we see seamless mobility solutions, totally on the right-hand side, you even see don't see buses anymore. Whereas today, the bus has 20% of market share, so to say, compared to seamless mobility solutions, buses are not the right means. Uh, buses wouldn't be a good solution anymore. Perhaps there will be some buses using um, main roads from north to south, for instance, or west to east, or um, let's say um, circling around. But the train even here for such um, questions has advantages compared to buses. And even if you combine buses with autonomous vehicles and private cars in an unconstrained um, solution or scenario, um, still the bus would decrease to 5% uh, based, on, um, based on such simulations. And this is quite interesting for me that buses in the future uh, won't have uh, such a, an importance anymore if we take higher or more efficient solutions like uh, autonomous vehicle shuttles, for instance. So this is just one scenario. Um, of course, we can discuss this if this gets uh, will come true or not. But still, um, in simulations that shows that shuttles really have an advantage compared. And here is such a shuttle. Perhaps you know it. Um, this is from um, Osnabrück, where Hubi is um, circling through the city. And here you can read it faster than I explain it. You just book a seat. You jump in the in the uh, shuttle, you reserve the seat and um, you let yourself transport to to a place where you want to be, which is on the road, on the route um, that are matched with other um, customers, with other clients that book the seat. And that at the end, if you see it as a network, um, combining the demand with the solution, then it works out and the capacity load can or the your capacity solution and utilization rate can raise up to 80 percent this is quite interesting it's just an and example we, and we see, we, yeah and we see yeah. a lot of this of the things and startups uh, in this environment uh, building up for years this, this kind of buses in an autonomous level so and uh, for sure we are working on this infrastructure and get a better infrastructure to operate this this kind of mobility for sure, also for the for the logistic and uh, for for good uh, transport. So, and um, I'm sure that we will see in the next couple of years uh, this this kind of stuff in the in the cities. So, um, and uh, for sure, we will see this also for the for the goods. There's there's there's, there's no question about that. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so the the let's say those solutions that were accepted 
the fastest on the market, they will be at the end then the dominant design and the dominant solution. And um, um, in this simulation, such such shuttle services really take over a, a, a quite a big market share. Um, Julian said something about the different layers that have to be addressed from a technology perspective. So we see four layers um, that are important where you can really um, find new business models. The one is the interface level where you have apps, for instance, um, that are really convenient to use um, and that are optimizing your routes, for instance. This is the interface level. You have the digital and analytics level, as Julian already mentioned, where you collect data about um, um, traffic situations, for instance, um, the current situation on the road by roadside units. That means sensors that are set on the left and right hand side uh, of the road or even using traffic lights as sensors and so on. Um, where you do analytics, even you can do analytics uh, according to a bandwidth. That means is your bandwidth 5G, 4G, 5G, 6G fast enough to transmit all the data that you need in order, for instance, to steer a vehicle from a central point when you have semi-autonomous driving. Then you have the whole rolling stock. The rolling stock means these are all the transportation means that have wheels and that are able to transport the people and the rolling stock is part of the business model you can hear you can see or we see here for instance complete fleets that are in place here um, even from voy or from lime with the scooters over then um, shuttle services where you have complete sh fleet shuttles the rolling stock and the infrastructure which is typically operated by, by cities themselves, but you can also have solutions where public-private partnerships or even privates uh, manage the whole infrastructure. Um, and and uh, this, this is about rail, railways, roads, and so on. Yeah. And, and a lot, lot of use cases where, where the technology is even ready to, to roll out is failing based on the, the, the infrastructure the city brings. So uh, think about mobile infrastructure, think about uh, road uh, maintenance and problems with the roads, blocking points on the roads or something else. So these are, this, the, the infrastructure is not ready to operate this, this kind of seamless mobility, robot taxi or something else. So we really have to, 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 to improve this in, in a really fast way or this scenario 2030. Yeah. Yes. That was yes, what I, I wanted to. Uh, that was what I wanted to ask. Are there already many uh, or several uh, pu public-private partnerships in Germany or in Europe, or which city is uh, the the best city in this in this area for public-private partnerships? At the, moment, it seems, it, at the moment, it seems that Helsinki is quite a good place uh, where you can see good good solutions. Um, I've been to Helsinki. Um, Honestly speaking, uh, speaking, I did not see that much intermodal model solutions because, in my opinion, Helsinki is a bit too too small for this because you can reach a lot of things by feet, and that means that the public uh, transportation system in Helsinki is al already good enough. Um, still, they have a platform where you really can do this on an intermodal and more or less seamless way. Of course, you have waiting time, you have um, um, commuting time till you reach, for instance, from a bus stop or from a, um, from a tram stop, uh, the next solution like a, a scooter or so. Um, it's not really uh, in place yet, but the app, um, the app and the platform is interoperable and this works out. A, a good place is uh, where you have good tra public transportation, where you have good um, infrastructure on the road and different solutions in place where you combine it. Um, you, you, you have even to use um, say cycling ways for bicycles. So when we use these 
preconditions, I would say Copenhagen would be a good place to to you to to try out, because mm -hmm. you have cycling ways, you have all these other um, necessary models in place, and you could combine it there, in my opinion, quite well. And from which angle would you say is it easier to enter the market from? Uh, from the the angle the infrastructure is is uh, developed, or from the angle there are already great companies, uh, they have the um, they have the the technology, and then go into the market and say, here we are with our great idea. This is a question for Julian. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I mean, it's it, it it depends on the layer, I think. But um, we saw lots of startups coming from completely different uh, areas and bringing some new data into the market and combine that with a, a mobility solution. And then um, it was a new starting point. So uh, as I mentioned with the Chinese company and the, and the mobile infrastructure, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's is something it's, it's not that clear as not only the one way. So I think it's, it's really a, a broad approach where you can, where you can uh, come from, different areas and bring that information um, to the to the point. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of potential in the infrastructure. So, and for sure there are political hurdles and mm -hmm. a lot of stakeholders in that, but um, well, um, uh, the guys are working hard. I think uh, it's, it's there's there's a yeah. massive, yeah, there's a massive change and, and we will see that for sure. For now it's the test area one and test area two and test area three. So there's a, Car is driving uh, on best best weather condition from A to B in an autonomous way, but in, 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 for a real case or in, 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 in the use case in, in in a reality environment, so in a real environment, so there's uh, lots of uh, lots of space and a lots of a lot of way to go. Mm -hmm. One okay. one point, Joanna, is quite an interesting one because Mark Hoffman wrote in here. Yes, this is a political question. He tries to push the operators, the public transportation operators for buses, for instance, towards smaller sizes of buses and using these kind of shuttles. Um, and when we talk about autonomous shuttles, then it comes already to lobbyism where we see big hurdles to over, that we have to overcome. Because of course, that the question is, uh, the question at the end is, uh, is are the, the uh, workplaces that we, replaced here by autonomous driving shuttles, um, are these of question or are they, are they questionable or not? And then of course, each lobbyism or lobbyist says it's not safe enough, it's not uh, mature enough and so on. But I agree to, to Mark that this will be a huge, um, a, a huge growth market. Yeah, absolutely. Once it's once it's um, once it's um, allowed to do so and the rules and regulations are in place then the other solutions are gone yeah yeah i think so too yes here we have a, a couple of technologies that are necessary uh, bandwidth and latency uh, rates so time uh, that that you don't have any um, delays in transmitting data is very important at the moment. For instance, when you want to drive back all your fleet back to, to let's say, uh, a service station and things like that, you have to have very short latency rates. Or when your um, shuttle is stopping somewhere because of an unknown problem, then um, you have to um, step in by a control unit for instance, from a, from a decentral operator, from a studio that is driving the shuttle around um, 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 an obstacle or something that is blocking the road and so on. Um, there are a couple of things that have to be in place in terms of infrastructure, um, as well as data analytics, that you do these data analytics cases. Um, and um, sharing intermodal things is all about the, 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 the platform and platform solutions. Um, and these kind of platform solutions are being developed at the moment. We see it from WIM, we see it from um, um, Siemens, and others on the world are developing it as well. This was a short outlook here. These are the values, values of seamless mobility, what you can get out of it. 
Um, we can share these um, slides later on. Um, I want to hurry up a bit here. In my opinion, uh, a good a good slide that shows the combination of fleet supply and rolling stock supply on the right hand side on the demand on the other and DRT solutions could be really a game changer in the future. That means demand responsive transportation solutions. And this works out when we have some game changers uh, and we see surely this very soon, I would say within the next three years that we see these DRT solutions growing. Um, this is my prediction. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but let's meet in three years from now. Uh, the important thing here is that all those parties, public, um, the, um, the, the individuals, um, the platform providers, uh, and the offers of, of um, mobility solutions, that, that means different solutions, they have to collaborate here. And this is the big, the big hurdle, because at the moment we don't see standardization um, um, routines or standard, standardization initiatives that work out. This is this is a big hurdle, my opinion. We have a, a, a an outlook a bit um, when we look on the market vol volume. You see subscription based driving, for instance, which is increasing in the U.S. very much. We see it in Europe or in Germany as well. But when you compare it to China, for instance, here we see other solutions or other markets like ride hailing that uh, are coming up more compared to the others. Um, the study says it's based on, on behavior, it's based on routines that we know. It's easier to have a subscription-based owning, com so it's closer to what we are used to compared to Asia, where they are open to completely new solutions. And uh, owning a car at the, own, at the end is at the moment still something for the status of the people, but for the big share of people living in Asia, Ride hailing will be something that creates a, a big market and a big demand. Mm. And then at the end, I would say, let's have a short outlook. You said urban air mobility solutions, BTOLs, um, landing on restaurant platforms where you have a short walk to a restaurant. I would say it's rather a niche and a premium mobility service in the future. On the right hand side, we see in Paris, for instance, a solution with boats on river and waterways. And um, of course, you have to need or you have to have waterways in the city to have such solutions um, uh, and big enough waterways. I would say Venice, if you don't, if you know the channels in Venice, they are quite, quite narrow. The same applies for Amsterdam. So there are some use cases for that. Still, I would say um, it's still a, a bit of a niche uh, for the combination with other um, uh, mobility solutions. A good place for, um, for waterways is Cairo because there you have a big, a big, big river. Um, the Nil, uh, there you can use uh, waterways um, in a, a wider extent. The same applies a bit for, for Shanghai or for Hong Kong. You have to have big waterways, big spaces on the water. Then you can um, use these kind of mobility solutions in, in combination with others. So I think, Julian, um, what do we have? We, we, we would have a, a short video uh, explaining such a trip, uh, but I think we're out of time. I don't know no, it's okay. You. Is it okay? Yeah, it is okay. Should Take we... time to show it. Okay. But we perhaps, perhaps before we start, uh, I'd like yes. to, to send to the audience uh, the question, what would you think would the future look like? Would you think the future of mobility goes more into the air or the, the waterways, as uh, Heiko already said, or really a combination, or will there be something totally different? Um, what's your opinion? You can write it into the chat. In the meantime, Heiko will show the video. Yes, I'll show the video. One note, but because Mark mentioned something interesting, because at the moment, of course, we are lacking uh, bus drivers and people driving those um, existing solutions. Um, and here, 
indeed would be um let's say something where we where we could tackle um the lobbyism um towards using and expanding um so autonomous driven and autonomous um um yeah driving vehicles or shuttles and uh, still i would say julian we know a couple of um a couple of solutions that work when it's nice weather um still there are technical i would say challenges to overcome within the next three to five years perhaps we really come to the, to this situation and it would be interesting for me what kind of what kind of um, experiences mark has i would love to 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 go in discussion later on but before we do so let's have a short uh, look on the um on the use case here and this use case is indeed coming from here the map solution um, a spin off of uh, nokia nokia here and let's have a short look here i hope it works With environmental awareness increasing each year, public demand for urban mobility operations to contribute to a sustainable future is on the rise. My name is Tamara Cholo and I'm the Product Marketing Manager at Here Technologies for Urban Mobility. Join me as I explore how location technology can help operators enable the future of mobility. In this demonstration, I will cover public transport and on-demand mobility, such as ride hailing and car sharing, as well as micro-mobility, such as scooters and bikes. Let's begin our journey with Henry, who will go out to see his friends at a beer garden in town. Henry lives in a rural area and uses public transit app to find the best route. The app is powered by his location intelligence, like intermodal and transit routing, as well as geocoding and search. He enters his location and receives a detailed route suggestions, including all the transport modes he will travel from home to his final destination with. Henry decides for a mix of walking, taking the shuttle and train. The app of the shuttle provides reminders to Henry uh, to leave his home in time to catch the shuttle. And it guides him directly to the pickup zone with turn by turn navigation. A shuttle is selected based on the distance and ETA to Henry. The driver is informed and gets routed to the pickup location. Henry receives a precise ETA. Once Henry gets to the train station, he receives a real-time alert from his public transport app about a 15-minute delay of the train. Here, real-time traffic and real-time transit keeps users up to date and ensures timely arrival and journey adjustments. Once on the train, Henry decides to book a taxi instead of walking to the beer garden. He orders a cab and shares this real-time location with the taxi company. The ride hailing provider will search for a nearby ride five minutes before his arrival at the station. Henry gets to the station at rush hour, but the public transport app guides him safely through the crowds with AR wayfinding to the right exit where the taxi will be waiting for him. In the meantime, the taxi is allocated based on the fastest time of arrival and guided to the taxi pickup zone. Based on Henry's position, the taxi can locate him with one meter accuracy. The taxi driver saves time with HIRS routing that's specialized for on-demand operators. Thanks to HIRS precise maps, Henry is dropped off at a safe destination without busy roads to cross. Safe destinations can be marked with here to avoid pickup and drop off related road incidents. Henry is then guided to the entrance of the beer garden where his friends are waiting. Thanks to here's real time updates, taxi lane routing and advanced maps for on demand, Henry made it on time. Our next uh, mobility micro story focuses on Malika, who lives in the city and wants to spend her birthday in the countryside with friends. Malika wants to travel with the smallest environmental impact as possible. She opens a public transit app powered by his location services and looks at the suggested routes. She decides to take the bike to the station, take the train out to the countryside and collect her EV rental vehicle at the station. With here intermodal API, Malika receives the most up-to-date route and gets real-time notification if her plan needs to change. The weather is great, so a bike ride fits right into her schedule. 
She sets off her journey and is guided to the closest bicycle that she can use to cycle to the station. Here, pedestrian guidance helps take users from A to B in the safest and shortest way. With Here's precise positioning that allows for one meter accuracy, she finds her bike easily. She cycles to the station along the safest route marked in the app and provided by the mobility operator. Malika drops off her bike at a designated area marked by the micromobility provider. Designated areas are easy to find with Here maps and help manage free floating assets. As she is still early, Malika decides to grab a coffee before she heads to the platform. With Here in the navigation, Malika can find her favorite coffee place and a designated platform in no time, catching the train hassle-free. Indoor navigation is key for public transport operators and venues to keep the crowds moving through the transport hubs without causing blockages. While on the train, Malika receives a notification that her EV is ready to collect outside the station and informs her about vehicle details like its charge status. The car rental company is using her positioning to alert Malika about the whereabouts of her vehicle. Once at the station, Malika meets her friends and collects the electric car. The car is displayed clearly on the map of the car hire company, which makes it, makes it easy to find. The rental provider also offers Malika and her friends an end-to-end -end service by delivering valuable EV content, such as the closest charging stations and detailed EV routing. So Malika never runs out of power, no matter where they're going. Here powered location services for mobility operators are always one step ahead, delivering customer satisfaction every step of the way. Okay. So, of course, it's a bit, um, um, let's say, uh, an advertisement, but still the, the use cases are quite um, realistic. Um, I think there it makes clear how you can change and switch between different um, transportation modes. So, this was it from my side. I would say if we have some time, we can start a bit the discussion, Joanna. What do you think? Which... You are you are mute. Ah, now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would pick up the the comments um, which I've got here on my display. Uh, the first is from Mark, um, who wrote that bus operate bus operators would love autonomous since um, they simply don't find drivers to grow their market. Hmm. That's a really good comment, um, and um, yeah, of course, a big problem. And the other from Mario, thank you very much. I know this talk is mainly about seamless mobility, which in my opinion is the big dream of companies like Siemens to connect everything and be the main platform. But on the other side, there is a huge boom in individual mobility, which we see with e-bikes. It's the freedom, the fun, the, the individually, not being dependent on others. Mobility is passion and freedom. I don't believe there is one system for all, but many different individual solutions. Yeah. Great yeah. comment. Yeah. You would like to pick it up? This, this, in, in my opinion, the, the last one from Mario underlines that you don't can focus on just one solution here. Um, or you can do, but we see is the increase in the recent um, yeah months with the e-bikes with normal bicycles um, and this run um, you don't know if it is on on the long term so if, if it if the run is keeping up um, if it is changing in the future for instance when we have e-bike so motorbikes based on electric uh, drive. Um, if there will be a shift a bit here, so it's really hard to predict which is the, the dominant solution. A mix of all will be surely one. So if I would, would have to invest, I would invest more in a platform covering multiple different solutions, combining those um, and not putting all in one basket like, let's say, e-bikes or um, or e-shuttles or autonomous shuttles. So this is mm. this would be my my answer. 
Uh, I also think it's 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 what Mario said. So um, it's it's based on the preconditions of the cities and um, based on the culture of the people. And um, I think that's 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 depends on which which mobility way or way of mobility is is the right for 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 the people in the city. So and that's that's the reason for having um, an airplane in the city or an helicopter or uh, more bikes and e-bikes. So and as we see, saw here in with the here advertisement video. So um, I mean. Not only because it's seamless, it's it's cool to have twenty of uh, uh, different mobility uh, things. So with a bike and a car and the Uber and the bus and and so on. But it's it's about these criteria as Michael mentioned before. It's it's availability and affordability, efficiency, convenience for the people, and for sure sustainability in the cities of of the futures. And I mean the government of the the local governments of the cities has to optimize with the infrastructure and the infrastructure is also the platform to organize mobility in a city. So, and um, this, there's something to improve. Mm. So there are many chances as well for, for startups, for small companies, but uh, to, to develop or to increase their engagements towards uh, solutions, um, hardware solutions as well, of course. And it's, it seems to me, uh, after after uh, this discussion this evening, uh, it seems to me that there is a necessity of uh, building or creating uh, the technologies and platform online platforms to combine and to collect all these hardware solutions on the platforms to make it for the users easier. Yeah. So this is the platform perspective and uh, the perspective of let's say a mobility provider based on scooters or based on e-bikes. At the moment, focus very much on their own solutions. Um, there are some tendencies to integrate their solution in others, like uh, combining um, car rental solutions like uh, FreeNow or DriveNow um, with bikes or scooters. Um, still, this is not enough. Yeah. Uh, I think in the future, interoperability between the different hardware solutions uh, of the rolling stock um, has to, to be put in place. And if you are not doing this, probably you are out of the game uh, yeah. when others do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting and exciting. And a lot of movements and developments will happen, I suppose. Yes. So if there are some startups out there going in this business, just feel free to get in touch with us. Yeah. Great. Great. That's a good, good word at the end. So we run out of time anyway. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Heiko and Julian, for your time uh, and for, for having the chance uh, to spend this um, open masterclass with me together. It was a great pleasure to have this uh, se session with you. Um, See you next time uh, to the audience. See you next time. We will have our next session uh, on September 6th with our partner, Simon Schiller. And there we will talk about uh, the future value of data and CRM. That will be totally, a totally different topic, <laughs> but uh, interesting as well. It could um, be connected here because CRM as a platform, you have the customer data and you can share it and you can use the preferences always and offer the right DRTs. That is correct. Okay. Yes. Tell Simon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was, a, Thank you so much, Joanna. It was a pleasure cool. always. Yeah. As always, Joanna. Hope to of see course. you soon again. You too. Perhaps next yeah. time in Berlin. Last yeah, hope you so. into Munich. Great with ice cream. See you. With ice cream. Perfect. <laughs> it's good. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.